Hey, all right, hey, well, welcome back here. And uh, we took our 15 minute break, actually a little longer than that, and because uh, we were getting our equipment. And let's keep continuing talking about chapter two. Um, but I will pause because uh, during our break, um, you may have uh, noticed already that uh, we went over to our mailbox and my uh, new lapel mic uh, came in. And so we could actually then use the rappel mic, which means that we can use the better quality uh, camera and we can actually put the camera in the back of the room and... Um, uh, anyways, I, I hope the other ones came out fine, so I hope that there's not a whole lot of poor quality, but uh, the, the longer and the, 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 the focal plane is better with the, with the camera further back, and we like that better. And I can even whisper, and if I whisper uh, or, you know, change the tone of my voice, and when I whisper, uh, I think the uh, lapel mic still uh, picks that up. And so when I turn around to the board, uh, anyways, that's, that's why we've always liked the l lapel mic. So anyways, glad one uh, finally came back and uh, our old one broke. That's what happened. But uh, let's get uh, uh, started here. And so I'm going to start with this over here. This is a good experiment. Uh, if you remember before the break, we were saying here that what is that subtlety difference between speed, velocity, and acceleration? And in this case, this is a nice little experiment that kind of asks the students to, to think about this. Uh, it's a kind of a race. And so I'm going to take these two metal uh, ball bearings here. And I'm going to put them on this uh, race track. And uh, what we learned here is that the acceleration depends on the slope of the, of the hill. So this first track, the one closest towards the camera, if I put it here and you watch it kind of race, it'll go down and then down again and then up and into the catch. The, the other track, this one here, uh, doesn't have that second down. It just goes down at the beginning and then it's level all the way across. So my question for you is if I race these two at the same time, which one will win? Uh, so what I'm going to do here in a second is I'm going to put both of these on track one and track two at the same time. I'm going to let them go. Ah, don't want you to see yet. But I want you to make a prediction. I want you to look at these two tracks and how they're set up and what will happen. Will the ball bearing on track one win? Will the ball bearing on track two win? Or will it be a tie? Now remember, the acceleration depends upon this slope. And uh, go ahead and hit the space bar, pause. Think this through. Now, unpause it. Because let's do the race. And so, whatever you're thinking, keep that in mind. But let's race them and then let's talk about it. Alright, so here we go. On the count of three, I'll let them go. One, two, three, race. All right, so which one won? And uh, hopefully you can see on the, on the camera there, but uh, the one closest to you, track number one, won. And let's talk about that here for a moment. Uh, back here at the beginning, both of them start at the same height. They have the same slope. They go down, and so I'd say right here, they each have the same acceleration, and so at this point, it's a tie. And so same acceleration, same acceleration, same acceleration. Then they get to this flat part. Now, a flat part would mean no acceleration. And here's what's fun about this. No acceleration doesn't mean no speed. No acceleration means no change in the speed. So during this flat part, they just go the same speed. Now, track two way over here, and you'll notice it then is flat all the way across. So for the rest of the race, track number two goes the same speed. It has zero acceleration except here at the beginning. So it, it gains some speed and then keeps the same speed all the way across. But track number one gains some speed, then is level, and so I would say the two are tied at this point. Ah, and then here's where there's more acceleration to track number one. So track number one then goes faster, and then all across this bottom, it's actually going faster than this track. And then it hits the uphill part. Now the uphill part slows it down. You might say it de-accelerates it. Or mathematically we'll say it has a negative acceleration. 
And so what that means is it slows down, but here's the catch. It slows down to the same speed that track number two had the whole time. And so it doesn't end up in a tie. And some people say, well, it slowed down. Yeah, it slowed down so it has the same speed. It didn't go so slow that it gave this one a chance to catch up. Track number one is always going either faster than number two or the same speed as number two. And so it would look something like this, that you let them go and they go faster, 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 same speed, same speed, same speed, and they're still tied. But down here, this one now is going faster than number two. And so number one begins to gain an increase in the space between number uh, two. And then eventually number one goes up and now it slows down to the same speed as number two. So at this point, they continue on at the same speed and this one, number one, is already ahead and so number one wins. So I hope your prediction was right, but more important, regardless of your prediction, hopefully now you see why number one is going to win. And, and you can also see why if you easily get these confused, you can easily say they tie or you can even say track number two wins, but that's not what happened. I'll, I'll race them one more time just to wrap it up here. And so one, two, three, go. Yay. Yep. And sure enough, you see it comes up, they were going the the same speed. So the, the like I said, that's a, a, a real good one and kind of a fun one to do to kind of make sure you guys are catching that difference between the acceleration and uh, the speed. Um, let's also talk, let, let's come back to here. Uh, if you remember before the break, I was putting this on here and we went through this long chart of saying, okay, if you let the ball roll down the hill, it has an acceleration of 30 centimeters per second each second. And it would be here at 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000. And we went through all those numbers. But here's my question. Could you have done the problem if I had made it a little higher and now instead of having an acceleration of 30, we have an acceleration of 40. 40 centimeters per second each second. And I'm hoping the answer is yes to that because what you'll see when you start doing the homework here is you won't have a homework problem that has an acceleration of 30. But you will have a lot of problems that have a constant acceleration and they will give you that acceleration. And so given a constant acceleration, could you fill in that whole chart? And that's what you'll be asked to do. You'll also be asked to go the other direction and that's what we uh, are going to do in lab today or maybe you already uh, did the lab. Uh, but in that, in the lab, what we do is we start with distance and from that get velocity and then get acceleration. And so in class we go from acceleration to distance and in lab we go from distance to acceleration. And so hopefully you see both of those approaches here. But what if I went even higher with this inclined? What if I lifted it up? And I've not measured it, but if I were guessing for I would say the acceleration here is probably about 80 centimeters per second squared. But what I do want you to see is I could do this problem at 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. And as I increase the slope, the acceleration just keeps getting bigger. But the logic is still the same. And so the exact number hopefully doesn't matter to you. It's the logic, the thinking that I hopefully got across to you. But I also want you to see something else. Is there a maximum acceleration here? And usually when I say that in a face-to-face -face cl class, so I hopefully some of you are out there saying, well, well, yeah, if you keep increasing the angle, it gets bigger, 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 but eventually <laughs> when this board is just straight up and down, you don't even need the board anymore. I can just put this away. And this would be the same as me just dropping it and letting it fall straight down. 
and how big does that acceleration get? And so we call this free fall because it doesn't have the inclined, but I also might emphasize the word free fall means if you just have gravity. So you don't have the inclined plane and you don't have the atmosphere and that's important because I can't get rid of the atmosphere. You don't have a rocket engine. Well, that's pretty easy. I didn't put a rocket engine on. You don't have a parachute. Well, again, I didn't put a parachute on. But nothing else touching it. No parachute, no rocket engine, no incline, no air molecules. If you don't have anything other than just gravity, we call this free fall. And that's what that name free means. It's falling and it's freely falling. And so I need to tell you what that acceleration is. Uh, in the lab today, you are going to actually measure it. And hopefully you will get a number of about 980 centimeters per second each second. That's such a common number and useful number, we're going to give it its own little symbol, G. All right. Um, now, 980 is a pretty big number, so most of the time, we like to change it to meters per second squared. And even then, a lot of times for discussion to make things kind of easy on us and we can do things in our head, we'll just kind of round it to, to 10. And I'll do that for a moment. In fact, I'll say this. In class, when we have a discussion, let's just call it to 10 because we're trying to train our thinking. Uh, train the brain is what I like to say. But when you sit down and do a calculation, when you do your homework, when you do your test, when you do the labs, use 9.8. Get out your calculator and do 9.8. And uh, I'll kind of do, maybe once in a while I'll do the 9.8. It's not that hard for me either. I got my calculator right here. But that is the free fall. And like I said, I think today's lab, you'll really appreciate it. It's a, it's a, it's a really good uh, lab. And what, what's good about it is it hopefully convinces you that this is the value of the acceleration, as well as it gives you a chance to do the same thing that I'm trying to do here in, in the lecture, and that is trying to get you to distinguish between velocity and acceleration. Now, I should point out, did you notice that nowhere in here did I say what kind of object it was. Uh, was the object made out of aluminum? Was it made out of wood? Was it round? Was it square? And the neat thing about it is it's true for all of those. It doesn't matter what the object is, doesn't matter what shape it is, it has an acceleration of roughly 10. It's 9.8. Oh, watch. I, I, br I brought a couple of objects to try to, to show you. Um, if I take maybe a big object, call the softball big, and a smaller object, call it a, you know, a, a golf ball here. And if I hold these up, and I'll try to make the bottom of the two at the same level, and let it go, you will hopefully see they fell at the same rate. And so it doesn't matter that one is bigger than the other. One is heavier than the other. One is white and one is uh, orange. In fact, if I did this, a green one and an orange one, put them the same height. Again, they fall at the, the same rate. Uh, I could take one that is hollow and one that is small and metal and heavy. And I put them at the, the bottoms at the same spot. They will hit at the same time. So I'll, I'll say it again, the, the lesson here is if you come across a problem and it says it is dropped or it says it's under free fall, uh, as long as it doesn't have a parachute on it, a rocket on it, it's not on an incline and it's, uh, you know, and this is the weird part, we can say it's going slow enough that we don't have to worry about the air molecules. We'll say it's free fall and we will say that it has an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second each second. Now just to also convince you, um, I'll take something like this coffee filter and I'll go back to the softball. Do these fall at the same rate? 
and you can hopefully see no way <laughs> not even close and that's because this small I mean this light but kind of wide coffee filter interacts with the air molecules a lot and so this is not free fall this does not have an acceleration of 9.8 this one although there still are air molecules in the room uh, we would say they have very minimal uh, effect so we have to be careful when we talk about free fall because we can get rid of a parachute real easily we can get rid of a rocket engine real easy we can get rid of an incline pretty easy too but the air molecules we, we can't and so we have to ask ourselves are these objects going slow enough or are they small enough or big enough that we don't have to worry about the air molecules it's, it's why I brought this kind of fun experiment out um, I'm kind of hoping you can kind of see it in the video camera I know even in a the regular face-to-face -face, uh, class it's can often be hard to uh, see this let me just rearrange my power cord here but inside of this cylinder here I actually have uh, there's a feather and then there's a little silver uh, plug a piece of metal looks kind of like a little uh, well it's a little bigger than a nickel but it looks a lot like a nickel um, and there's a feather in there there's actually even a piece of paper over here and so if I turn these over and maybe I should check the air pressure here okay but I'm hoping you can see that this feather doesn't quite fall as fast as that metal coin but if I turn on the vacuum pump and I give it a while to get all the air molecules out of there and I think that's long enough and I close this valve so the air molecules can't get back in disconnect the rubber hose then I should have done that before and moved the hook you'll see that all three of these and particularly that piece of paper fall together at that same rate and if I add the air back in and show you again you'll see especially that piece of paper look how much longer it takes for that paper to fall so that's what we mean by by free fall so as we come to the end of the chapter here let me make two more charts uh, maybe I'll go a little bit uh, faster so we can get started with the next chapter but just like we did before the break what if I did this what if I put a little chart on the board and I'll put time and measure it in seconds and I'll put a zero one two and I'll just do three seconds this time and let me put again acceleration velocity and distance just like we had before and this time if you could imagine me taking this golf ball and going up the stairs outside and going to the top of the building get up on the the third floor there and lean over with the golf ball and let it go and so as it begins to fall zero one two three seconds could you tell me the acceleration the velocity and the distance at each of those moments and I'm hoping this looks exactly like the problem I just did with the incline before the break the only difference though is right here if I drop it what would be the acceleration and that's what I was just trying to say this would be 
free fall if we can ignore the air friction. The next chapter will talk about, well, what if you can't ignore the air friction? But for right now, let's just say I can ignore the air friction. And so I would say the acceleration is 10. And so if you'll let me round the 9.8 to a 10, I would say I have an acceleration of, of 10. And this is what I was trying to say is this is really the same problem, it's just a different number. So instead of having 30 centimeters per second each second, I have 10 meters per second each second. So could we fill this in? Could you tell me the speed? Could you tell me the speed when I first let it go? Yeah, zero. What would be the speed one second later? 10. Why 10? Because the acceleration is 10 meters per second each second. What does that mean? That means change your speed by 10 meters per second each second. So how fast is it going after two seconds? 20. Because again, change by 10. Uh, how fast is it going after three seconds? 30. Because again, it means change by 10. And so I would say that after three seconds, how fast is it going? It's going 30. Now, you can do the calculation also like we did. And I'll just leave it at that and say, okay, I, I, I think you guys got it now. We've done a bunch of these and now it's your turn to start doing the homework and calculating them. And you can put in your time. Uh, maybe I'll put a delta T. You can put in your acceleration of 10 and you can find out what your change in, in speed is. Now if you also remember before the break, the harder one here is to get its distance. And so if we say the distance is zero right when you let it go, so I really lean over the building, I let it go. So right as I let it out of my hand, the distance is zero, that makes sense. But how far is it after one second? Now if you remember, the little formula we have, velocity equals the distance over the time. That right there is tempting to say the distance is 10 because it's tempting to put a speed here of 10. But remember, this is really the average speed. So I need to come back over here and say, okay, from 0 to 10, it only averaged 5, right? It, it, it did not have an average of 10. For it to go a distance of 10 in one second, it would have to have an average speed of 10. It would have to have 10 for that whole one second for that to work. And that's not what's happening here. It's starting with zero speed and going faster, 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 faster until it gets to 10. So it's instantaneous speed is 10 after one second. But most of that time, from zero to one second, it wasn't going, it was not going 10, it was going less than 10. <clears throat> and of course, that's where the five comes in because half of it was going under five and the other half was going over five. And that's why when you put in this number of an average speed of five, which we could get by saying zero plus 10 divided by two is five and this would be meters per second. And then we can do the same thing here. We could say from 1 to 2, it would have an average speed of 15, so it must go 15. And 15 on top of that 5 is 20. And then from 2 to 3 seconds, it looks like it's going to have an average speed of 25 because it started with 20 and went to 30, so that's 25. And so it's going to go 25 more. It's already gone 20. 25 more makes a total of 45. And so there's the little chart, and you'll be asked to do that. Now, one more chart, and I'll call this quits, because here's probably the hardest one of all. What if I begin this golf ball, not up at the top of the building, but down here on the bottom of the building outside that door? What if I were to throw it up with a speed? So I give it an initial speed. I'm not letting it go, so its, it's initial speed is not zero. I give it a really speed. I mean, I just chuck it as hard as I can straight up. And I give it a speed of 30 meters per second going up. Let's try a chart with that one. And uh, maybe I'll 
Now, I'll, I'll clear this part. I think you'll remember the free fall, and I'll leave these so we can kind of con compare them. But if I take this golf ball and I chuck it straight up, and I make a chart, and so here's time. And so here's the acceleration of it. Uh, here is the velocity of it. Here is the distance of it. I'll measure my time in seconds. I'll measure my acceleration in meters per second squared. I'll measure my velocity in meters per second, and I'll measure my distance in meters. All right, so let's go zero, one, two. And let's have the ball go all the way up and then come all the way back down. And what you will see is that will actually take six seconds. And it may not be obvious to you yet, but let me just fill in my chart for six seconds. Because I'll start then with this first column and say what is the acceleration. Wait, the ball's going up. So does that change the acceleration? No, and that's what I, I want you to see. I want you to say that I'm going to put the acceleration, but I'm going to put a little arrowhead this time, and I'm going to say the acceleration is down. You can see it well in this equation right here. This equation says that it is final speed minus initial speed divided by time. See how this number right here, final minus initial, could be positive or could be negative? Watch, do you see this? When the final speed is a number that is bigger than the initial speed, and so you have a big number minus a small number. Don't you get a positive? But what if it's the other way around? What if the final speed is less than the initial? See how you would get a negative there? And so what I'm trying to point out here is our acceleration could be positive or could be negative. You see positive numbers, look what the positive number is saying. Positive number is saying that the final speed is more than the initial speed. But what is the negative saying? The negative acceleration is saying that the final speed is less than, so it's slowed down. Now, I should probably say that a little more accurate. Here's what it means. It means then that if I am going this way, and I'm accelerating in the same way that I am going, I will end up going faster. But what happens if I am moving this way, positive, but my acceleration is this way, negative? That means I would be slowing down. And so, a positive acceleration goes faster, but a negative goes slower. Or I should say it a little more accurately. When the two are in the same direction, you go faster. When they are in opposite directions, they slow down. See, the reason I wanted to say that, and the reason I said this is probably the hardest one of this chapter is, I told you that I'm going to stand at the bottom of this building and I'm going to chuck this golf ball up as hard as I can, and I'm going to throw it upward at 30 meters per second, and I'm going to put a little arrowhead to say I am throwing it up. That's the initial speed. That's the speed when it leaves my hand. But it's these two arrowheads I want you to see because this is saying the ball is going up, but this is saying gravity is pulling it down. The acceleration is down. So the acceleration is opposite to the directions it's moving. So what would the 10 do to it? Yeah, and in face-to-face -face I hear a lot of people say, ah, I get it, it would slow it down. 
Right. So we still say it has an acceleration of 10, but the difference is it is a decrease of 10 instead of an increase of 10. So I want to emphasize that even though I've thrown the ball instead of dropping it, and even though the ball is going up, or even if the ball is going down, as we will see later, it doesn't matter if the ball is going up, it doesn't matter if the ball is going down, it doesn't matter if the ball is dropped with no speed, the acceleration is still 10 down. But how that acceleration affects the motion is related to the motion itself. See, because right here, if we have a free fall, if we always have an acceleration that is 10 down, then one second later, the speed of the ball is 20 on its way up still. Did you, did you see that? Did you see how it still changed by 10? But it slowed down by 10. That, that's what I was trying to point out here. That the acceleration is still down. The acceleration is 10. The acceleration has nothing to do with what direction you throw the ball. You could throw it up. You could throw it down. You could drop it. There always is an acceleration of 10 downward. But when you throw it up, and since it's moving up and the acceleration is down, that slows it down. Whereas when you dropped it, it was moving down and the acceleration was down, so that sped it up. And that's the harder one when they're in different directions. So as I go to fill in this chart, this chart would say, change your speed by 10. And when it's going up, it would be a decrease of 10. So that means... We started with 30, a second later it's now gone down to 20, a second later it's now gone down to 10, and a second later it is 0. What does 0 speed mean? This is really saying it's its highest point, right? It's not traveling. This thing has gone up, 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 and now it begins like I just dropped it. And so what would happen is it has come to a complete stop after 3 seconds. And then really the reverse takes place. After this, it begins to go down. And so now the acceleration, notice, hasn't changed. Notice the acceleration is still 10. But it's going down now. And so it is moving in the same direction as the acceleration. And so it picks up speed of 10. And so now it's going 10 down. And a second later, it would now be going 20 down. And a second later, it would be going 30 down. Oh, and I guess I forgot to put here. But I want to emphasize here, the acceleration is always 10 and it's always down. This part of the ball is going up, that's why when it changes by 10 it slows down. And in the second half, it's changing by 10 but it's speeding up. Which, by the way, now maybe you can see why I knew it was going to be 6 seconds. Because knowing this was a 30 and it loses 10, I knew it would take 3 seconds before it got to a speed of 0. That's going to be its highest point. And then it would, of course, repeat all that. So it would take 3 more seconds to get down to the ground level. We haven't done distance, but you'll see the, the height of it will be 0 here. And so let's try the third column, uh, the harder one. Uh, let's call zero the distance from your hand. And so as I stand on the edge of this building and I chuck it up as hard as I can, right when I let it go, let's call that zero. All right, so that's zero. But then how high is it after one second? Now maybe to answer that, let's come back over to here. Right, distance, average speed, and time. And so the time is the easier part. From here to here is just one second. But what is its average speed? I mean, let me give you two numbers and ask you to average them. Starts at 30, and it slows down to 20. What's the average of those two numbers? Well, if you add them together and divide by two, you get 25. So I would say its average speed is 25. So, taking that number, 25, times 1, is 25. So, this object would have gone up 25 meters, right? And again, let me just emphasize, right? If, if the ball had not slowed down at all, if there was no gravity, you threw it at 30, so in one second it would have gone 30. But it didn't stay that speed. It got less and less and less. 
and it went all the way down to 20. And so how far it went was the average of those. Well, you'll see it again. Watch this. From one second to two seconds. So from here it was going 20, and then a second later it slowed down to 10. That's an average of 15. So during this time interval, from 1 to 2, it had an average speed of 15. So that means it should go 15 more. So it's already 25 in the air, and it's going to go 15 more. So that should be 40. And again, you could do the same thing with the math here. I, I really am doing it. I'm just doing it one second at a time. So there's a lot of ways of doing that, and that's probably good. There's a lot of ways to do the homework. There's a lot of ways to do the test. And so there's a lot of ways to get the right answer. I'd say there's probably more ways to get the wrong answer, and so people do get wrong answers. But there's a lot of ways to get to the, to the right answer. And as I mentioned before, this will be the highest point. You can see it here. It's going 10 and it slows down to zero. The average of that is five. So during this time frame of two seconds to three seconds, it must have gone up five more meters. And so this is going to be its maximum height. So it goes up to 45 meters. And at that point, right here at the top, it has a speed of zero. But notice, by the way, it doesn't have zero acceleration. Remember, we talked about this before the break. Zero speed and zero acceleration, well, that's kind of boring. Here it is. Right there. Zero speed and zero acceleration. And so when the ball gets to the very, very top, boom, its speed is zero, but not its acceleration. Okay? And so be careful with that. Zero acceleration would mean don't change its speed. So if it had zero, a moment later it would still have zero. A moment after that it would still have zero. A moment after that it would still have zero. A moment after that it would still have zero. And so that'd be just something sitting up there at the top. And that, that, that's not what happens to this. So this actually does have a change. It does have an acceleration. Its speed at that moment is zero, but it's changing. It's going from going up to going down. Well, now the whole thing just kind of repeats in reverse. Uh, from 0 to 10, that's a 5, so it's going to go 5 more meters, but it's going to go down 5. So if we take 5 away from the 45, <clears throat> we're going to see it go down by 5 meters. Uh, same thing here, we're going to go down by 15, and in fact it's these numbers in reverse. And so we're going to drop by 15, so I'll take 15 away from the 40, that's 25. And then right here it's going to drop another